Capillary electrophoresis. Introduction, instrumentation and principle have been discussed in our last videos. In this video, I will discuss about the electroosmotic flow, electrical double layer and how the analyte components get separated and detected at the detector. Why do they move only towards the cathode? All these things we will be discussing here. Electroosmotic flow which is abbreviated as EOF. It is also called as electroendoosmotic flow. This is called as a bulk flow of the liquid within the given capillary and this will result from the applied electric field on the solution double layer at the capillary wall. So suppose if I am choosing an analyte and that analyte is present within this capillary now, whatever components that are present within the analyte they will spend some decent amount of time within this capillary. How much of time these analyte components spend is dictated by the electroosmotic flow. So it is the electroosmotic flow which will control the time spent by the solute particles of the given analyte. In turn, this electroosmotic flow is controlled by the selenol groups. What are the selenol groups? Let us see. If I am choosing a capillary, that capillary is made up of fused silica which is coated with polyamide which that will uh, render strength as well as flexibility to the capillary. Inside of this capillary wall are present selenol groups. These selenol groups could be protonated or it could be totally deprotonated or they could be partially protonated or deprotonated at a particular pH. There are three different ranges of this pH. Here we can see at a pH 3 or lesser than 3, all the selenol groups are protonated. But as the pH increase and when it crosses 9, all the selenol groups get deprotected. I mean, uh, pardon, they get deprotonated. In between pH 3 and pH 9, these selenol groups are partially deprotonated. So whatever buffer that we take, usually that buffer pH will be about 7.7. .7. So at this particular pH, most of the selenol groups are deprotonated. Then, right, uh, we are trying to compare the electroosmotic flow with the given pH. For our comparison, I have taken a reference from a journal of high resolution chromatography. Here, page number and the issue has been mentioned. Three capillaries made of pyrex, silica and polytetrafluoroethylene have been taken. We can see the effect of pH on electroosmotic flow. In almost all the cases as the pH is increasing the electroosmotic flow is also increasing. But the increase is more considerable in the case of the silica. We can see a typical capillary that I am choosing at a regular pH of the buffer where we are taking about 7 or 8 most of the surface charge is negative because they are getting deprotonated. So in the presence of this surface negative charges we can see that the electroosmotic flow it is moving from the anode end towards the cathode end. So always this is the flow of the direction. Why is it moving only towards the cathode end? We have to see this. Now we are arriving to the most important part. This is the electrical double layer which is abbreviated as EDL. What is this electrical double layer? We will just see now. This is the capillary wall. At this capillary wall we have negative charges coming from the selenol groups. These negative charges, they slowly try to attract the hydrated cations present in the bulk solution or the buffer solution. So as these hydrated cations get attracted to this, the uh, interactions will be very strong. We call this as electrostatic forces of attraction. So whatever negatively charged ions that are present here, they get, they are attracting the positively charged ions these are very very firmly held and whatever layer that is resulting that layer is called as a stern layer. There are also other names for it. It is also called as a compact layer or a fixed layer. So at this juncture of the negative surface 
charges and the hydrated cations there exist a potential this potential we call it as a surface potential or it is also called as a wall potential now still the negative charges can attract some more positive ions from the buffer solution so the other hydrated cations they can also get attracted to these negative charges but these are less firmly held due to weak forces of interactions and this particular layer is called as a diffuse layer this will create another potential and this potential is generally called as a zeta potential so as we come down that potential will be dropping this is only just one part of the capillary wall supposing that this is a longitudinal section this is only to the one end in the middle will be the bulk solution so the three different terminology the first one is the capillary wall where there is a surface charge which, which will attract the hydrated cations that will develop a potential called as a surface potential and the first layer is called as a stern layer or a fixed layer it is almost completely composed of the cations so here i am showing it the stern layer is fully of cations when it comes to the diffuse layer this diffuse layer can contain cations and also some of the anions the concentration of the cation is higher than the concentration of the anion within the diffuse layer then comes the bulk solution within the bulk solution the concentration of cations is almost equivalent to that of the anions and the two potentials that we have seen one is the surface potential and the another one is the zeta potential so if i just take this as a longitudinal section of the capillary on both sides we can see that this is the surface charges this one is the fixed or the stern layer on both ends and this becomes the diffuse layer here will be the bulk solution and the flow of this bulk solution will be towards the cathode why it is taking towards the cathode we'll be just discussing now what exactly happen is here we have seen that there are two layers one is concentrated with cations and the another is concentrated with cations and some part of the anions so just let me give this as a electro osmotic flow once a uh, high voltage current is passed we can see that this side is a anodic side and this side is a cathodic side so once this is a cathode this cathode will attract the cations in the stern layer we see that all are cations which are concentrated within the diffuse layer also we can see that there are more amount of cations so once a high voltage power is supplied all these cations they try to move towards the cathode now as they try to move this will create some electro osmotic flow because all the cations are suddenly they started to move towards the cathode so just suppose that this is the layer which is getting attracted towards the cathode and this is creating a electro osmotic flow so how it is being created as we said there is a zeta potential at the double layer and as the high potential is applied across the capillary imagining that this is a capillary when high potential is applied across the capillary uh, this is already concentrated with cations and this electrical double layer will exhibit a relatively high mobility or you can call it as a conductivity compared to the rest of the uh, buffer solution and this will drag this will just drag the solvating molecules of the buffer solution with them towards the cathode so this is creating the electro osmotic flow right so just let me show this imagine that these are the cations from the stern layer and the diffuse layer once the power is given this has started to move towards the cathode this is also taking the bulk solution along with it now once the sample is given this bulk solution will contain three different species one is a neutral species second is a cationic species and the third one is a anionic species the regular nature of the cation is to move towards the cathode so the electro osmotic flow its magnitude is very high and it is moving towards the cathode so every time i am not showing the moment of the electro osmotic flow you can just imagine that it is moving towards the cathode the regular nature of the cation is to move towards cathode so the rate at which this cation is 
moving will be higher because its regular nature is to move towards cathode and also the electroosmotic flow is also taking it towards the cathode. So at the detector the first species to be detected will be the cation. When it comes to the neutral species, neutral species do not move towards the anode neither it moves towards the cathode therefore it has to be taken towards the cathode only due to the electroosmotic flow. So the rate at which the neutral species is moving will be the same as that of the electroosmotic flow. And finally if I am taking an anion its nature is to get attracted towards the anode but the magnitude of electroosmotic flow is uh, nearly about 10 times higher than the ionic mobilities so this will force the anion towards the cathode. But the rate at which this anion is moving this rate will come from the difference in its ionic mobility and the electroosmotic flow. So the final consequence is cation is trying to move towards cathode electroosmotic flow is also moving towards it therefore the cation is getting detected at first. Neutral species do not get attracted either to anode or cathode therefore its rate will be the same as that of the electroosmotic flow so this will be detected after the cations get detected and the anion since its nature is to get attracted towards the anode this will be detected at the end. So this is how the various analyte components get detected due to the electroosmotic flow. Just these points are given here that exist a zeta potential at the double layer and the electrical double layer is more concentrated with cations therefore it exhibits a very high mobility and it will drag the solvent molecules along with the running buffer and this creates the electroosmotic flow. So the rate of the cationic species it is uh, due to the ionic mobility which is natural towards the cathode plus the electroosmotic flow. Neutral species it will move at the rate which is same as that of the electroosmotic flow whereas the rate of the anions it is a difference in the ionic mobility and the electroosmotic flow. So how does it is dragging the bulk solution I have just depicted here. Electroosmotic flow it is towards the cathode and supposing that this is the bulk solution since the magnitude of the electroosmotic flow is higher it is trying to pull the bulk solution you can see and as the bulk solution is moving the components are getting detected. So this is how the capillary electrophoresis is very useful in separating the various components whether it is a cation, anion or a neutral species which get detected and whatever peaks that arise we can analyze it from the electrophorogram. What are the various things that affect the electroosmotic flow that will be discussed in the next video. Thank you.